Hey guys, this is Paige from Cars, and today we're going to talk about Ferrari Puro Sangue, the latest SUV in Ferrari's uh, lineup, and to be honest, the first four-door car that Ferrari produced ever. So let's get the basics out of the way first. The Ferrari Puro Sangue is the best SUV on the planet. Even if the Italians insist it's not an SUV, the facts are as simple as that. The Puro Sangue, Italian for purebred, is the most accomplished, enjoyable, luxurious, sporty and engaging four-door, four-seater sports car money can buy today. There are plenty of reasons for that and we'll get into those in this review. But it's important to understand just how significant this car is to the automotive world. For the last few years, the automotive industry has been stuck in this bizarre and frankly untrue paradigm that electric cars and electrification are of huge desire to consumers. And the only reason they are not more popular is due to their price premium. Furthermore, there's the that manufacturers who still make high displacement fuel guzzling machines are out of touch with consumer sentiment. Despite being a naturally aspirated fuel guzzling V12 super sports SUV at a staggering base price of about $400,000, the demand for Ferrari's first ever four door, four seater sport car is so high that you'll be waiting for about 18 months to two years before you'll get one. So next time someone tells you most consumers would buy an electric car if they had the money, just remind them that the V12 Ferrari family car is the most sought after Ferrari right now. It's fair to say that for every very very long time the world's most famous supercar manufacturer all but laugh at the thought of making an SUV. The company had in fact rejected the idea on numerous occasions in the past. Ferrari toyed with the idea with the FF and GTC for Lusso but times change and in Ferrari's case the likes of Porsche, Bensley and Rolls Royce all pushed the idea that an ultra luxury high-end brand can make an SUV. The Lamborghini came along with the Urus which flatly confirmed that a supercar can also be an SUV. In saying all that is the Ferrari Por Sangue even an SUV? That really depends on your definition. In person, the four-door Ferrari feels more like a giant hot hatch than an SUV. Then again, it has up to 210 mm ground clearance, all-wheel drive, and presents a super comfortable and spacious cabin for four that is befitting of the SUV tack. Frankly, whether the Puro Sangue is an SUV or not is irrelevant. What it is, is an excellent all-round package that is guaranteed to become a modern classic before it even reaches the first customer. The Puro Sangue has a 6.5 liter V12 mounted so far back in the chassis, you can only see the front six cylinders under the hood. It's paired with an 8-speed transaxle that drives the real wheels and a two-speed gearbox driven off the front of the engine enabling all-wheel drive. The mostly aluminum chassis is lighter and stiffer than that of the GTC4 Lusso. The car this replaces despite being much larger overall. Like a lot of big luxury performance cars it has four-wheel steering but here each rear wheel can steer independently of the other. It also has the most extraordinary suspension system featuring Multimatic's new true active spool valve TASV dampers. These dampers use motors to control the stroke independently of road surface. Add in the latest version of Ferrari's various electronic chassis system and you have one of the most interesting cars on sale. Ferrari says the suspension enables everything here. In the Port Sangue, there are no anti-roll bars. The dampers control the body roll on their own while allowing each wheel to move independently of one another. Right height is also controlled by the dampers. So the Port Sangue forgoes the air springs typical of high-end luxurious SUVs for traditional coils. Ferrari essentially uses the system which adopts Ferrari active suspension technology or FAST to decouple ride quality from roll Stiffness. Normally in a high riding performance car, stiff springs and thick anti-roll bars are employed to ensure good handling, though this comes at the expense of ride quality. Active anti-roll bars and air springs can wrestle some fidelity back, but Ferrari engineers felt that this sort of system was too heavy and too slow to get the desired dynamics. Inside, there's two electronically adjustable buckets with a huge center console, all of which is accessed through rear hinge doors that open automatically when you pull on a small electronic lever, and close via a button inside. Up front, you're ensconced in the leather-lined cabin, helping create the illusion of of a lower car. There's no center infotainment screen, rather most functions are handled through the gauge cluster and controlled with haptic pads and buttons on the steering wheel and mirrored for the passenger on a separate touch screen. In the middle, there's a single rotary wheel with an integrated screen that rises out of dashboard and controls HVAC and some seat controls. The seats are very comfortable, especially with the optional massage function, a Ferrari first, and a standard glass roof makes it feel spacious and airy, even in all black. It's remarkably quiet too, keeping the sound of big tires and windows at bay, allowing the occupants to enjoy the excellent Burmester sound system. There's one noise that comes in though, the V12. This V12 is one of the all-time greats. Smooth and cultured, yet always willing to rip past 8 grand. There's not a ton of exhaust sound, but in the cabin you get plenty of intake and combustion noise with the RL signature constantly changing based on engine speed and throttle position. Being naturally aspirated, it's easy to manage the mighty power and torque available. You're also encouraged to rip the V12 out because even though there's a nice broad torque curve, the engine does its best and sounds its best the higher you climb. It's 
a special thing. Still, it's the chassis that makes the car what it is. The motors on the dampers can put in 5,000 newtons of force at each corner. The Ferrari integrates the system within its central chassis brain. The car looks at signal from a six-way chassis, dynamic sensor plus three body position and accelerometers and wheel positions sensors for each wheel. The car looks at signals from a six-way chassis, dynamic sensor plus three body position accelerometers and wheel position sensors for each wheel. All of this provides excellent data on what the car is doing at any given moment and allows all of the Puro Sangway systems to work together to provide optimal grip and chassis balance. One of the great things about these dampers is that they still use spool valves like all other Multimatic dampers, providing super precise control of damping force. With a base price of nearly $400,000, Poro Sangway is in a category of one, really. It's well more than double the base price of Aston Martin DBX and nearly $170,000 more than the expected base price of the new Lamborghini Urus S. But neither of those cars have a V12 or nearly such a clever suspension system. Hell, the Lamborghini shares underpinnings with the Audi Q7. The only other SUV in this price bracket is the Rolls Royce Cullinan, which incidentally also has a V12. These are very different machines though, the roller offering the ultimate in comfort and isolation and the Ferrari's superb driving dynamics. If you think that the poor Songway is too expensive, know that Ferrari has basically sold the entire production run already. Summing up, Top Gear says the poor Songway is the only SUV that deserves the sport utility tag, which Porsche Cayenne GT owners might take issue with, and the TG, Autocar, and Trend say it still feels like a Ferrari despite the additional doors, weight, and ride height. CND goes even further, saying that while every poor Songway buyer will likely also be able to afford a 296 Ferrari as a companion if you could only get one Ferrari, the SUV should be it. So this is it guys, everything about Ferrari's first ever SUV. Concise and precise as always. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification button to all. Stay tuned for our next episodes.